Hi everyone, I'm Carol Keller. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Illinois in the United States and I have for you quite a few different alternatives, I think seven altogether, different alternative cards for this month's paper pumpkin kit which is called Memorable Meadows. I have used almost all of the components in the kit, if not all, so this is the second month in a row I've been able to do that, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Here are photos of the cards that come with the kit as they are intended to be made. I love all of the designer series paper looks on the front and we're going to use all of those card bases. Of course on the back always always double check to make sure you have everything and if not contact Stampin' Up! and they will send you what you need. There are also some alternatives besides the ones that I will be showing you today and it also includes coordinating colors and this kit also coordinates with the Garden Meadow Suite which is an online exclusive and I will be using many of the components of that suite in my alternatives. And then we have, and I'm loving this, a new addition the last few months has been pictures of the stamps. And in this kit, there are two sets of stamps because it's March and Stampin' Up's, or Paper Pumpkin's anniversary. So we have some triple layer stamping, which we're going to do. We're going to use this set and we're going to use, we're going to use actually almost every stamp in both sets. So I've had a lot of fun working with this. Very easy to make alternatives from. I hope you like them. All right. Let's begin. Here is the first card. And actually I was able to make two cards from one of the panels from one of the card bases. This is the card base. And you can see that it has both front and back. So you know me, you know I cut that apart so we could use it twice. So I used, I believe this one, I used the back to make these. These are called quad triangle cards. The design is called quad triangle. And so we're going to make two cards from one card base and also using two envelopes. So I'm just going to move these aside. And if I need to, I'll move one of them out of the way. But we'll start by slicing up that envelope and getting to the beautiful pattern paper look that's inside. So I've got my trimmer and I'm just going to cut off a real thin, narrow slice on each end so that we can open it up. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And so we've got a beautiful panel to work with. The designer series paper that comes with that garden meadow suite, which I'll show you, coordinates with this beautifully. And so now what we want to do is we're going to cut this down to three and three quarter inches by five. So we'll take three and three quarters from this side. And five from this side. And then we're going to do the same thing with that card base. So we'll use the front one this time just to show you what that's like. So we'll do cut it at five inches. And you'll see you'll be left with a half inch strip on each side and the same thing really with the envelopes. So if we wanted to, we could use them on the inside of the card. I didn't do that because I stamped instead, but we certainly could. I may, I may try this on the alternatives today because I just thought of it. <laughs> And so, and then this side by three and three quarters again. So I elected to cut off the sky part and just keep it all daisies, but you have your choice. And then we're going to start by putting these two together because the first thing we have to do is cut them on the diagonal. So to do the first cut, it's easy to keep them together. For the second one, we're going to separate them. So I'm holding them together and putting the points in the channel. It doesn't matter which corner you start with because we have to cut them both or from both angles. And so we've got these and then I'm going to take them now just one at a time. You can, if you are worried about lining them up, you can put some washi tape or something on the back to hold them in place. But I am going to be brave doing this online <laughs> and just hold it with my fingers because what we're going to do is 
turn it the other way and cut the diagonal, cut the other diagonal. So again, pieces in the channel, all lined up. And actually, I always like to start somewhere in the middle of the paper. Let me just double check my alignment here since it moved a little bit. Start in here rather than at the end. When you have a pointed end, sometimes the blade will sort of crunch it. And so if you do that, then you don't have to worry. So we're gonna put those aside right there for now and then do the other um, piece of paper in the same way. So again, line them up and then get them in the channel. Just like that. And now we have all of our pieces. So we can take the trimmer away. And now I'm actually starting with a bubble bath card base. And so again, you're making two cards at a time. So I'm only going to assemble one, but I will show you what the second one will look like. And then I have a piece of balmy blue cardstock, and this is cut at first layer size. So five and a quarter by four. And so then this is second layer size at five by three and three quarters. And so what we're gonna do is alternate and take top and bottom from one DSP and sides from the other one. And so that's what one card will look like. And then obviously we're gonna do the same thing. I'll bring in another piece of balmy blue. And then we lay out the other pieces like this. So you do need two envelopes to get your four cards, but you only need one card base. So from that card base, there are three of them. So splitting them up, we can actually get 12 cards just from those three card bases. Love it. All right, we will stick with this. I'm gonna move this to the side for now. We're gonna work with this one, I think, because I like it. <laughs> I like them both. And so the easiest thing I found is we're gonna lay everything out and it actually looks pretty good like this, but I lay it out before I grab my seal to put it together. And it doesn't matter where you start. The idea though is to put your adhesive on and then not, not kind of press it into place until you know you're happy with that placement. <clears throat> So I'm just going to I think it's going to be about like this. The hardest part, I think, for the first one especially, is getting it centered. I'm going to move this over a little bit to the left because I don't think it's centered. I had that issue with the other ones. All right, that looks pretty good. And we'll do the opposite one. And you can match up the points, that's helpful. Provided your first one is centered, then your second one will be also. And again, before we put those into place, we're gonna lay these out as well. me it's easiest to make sure the side is straight. So that is what I'm gonna do. And making sure that I have about the same distance on each side so it's centered between the other two panels. And you wanna get it as exact as you can. However, if there are issues, it's you're going to have a label over it so it's going to be not so noticeable so i think that looks pretty good we're going to go with that and then that gets put on the card base so now we're going to do some stamping there are labels that come with the kit that are similar to this one and we're actually going to use it on one of uh, the other cards that i designed so but i use that for inspiration to make similar labels, which I cut from the Something Fancy dies. Let me just show you. Those are the Something Fancy dies. So I used the smaller of these two because it was about the same size. And so I've cut those dies out in balmy blue. 
And then I have a sentiment from the stamp set that comes with the kit and it says heartfelt thanks. And I'm gonna ink it up in balmy blue as well. And I'm gonna do both tags just so that I can have both cards then ready to assemble, even though we'll only be doing one on camera. So we'll leave one. And then for the inside, I took a sentiment from, what is it called? Something fancy. So it is the stamp set that is a companion to the dies. And it says, grateful for the everyday magic of you. And we're gonna stamp that on the inside also in balmy blue. And then for the last of our stamping, we're bringing in bubble bath and another stamp from the set. And these are all from the set that comes with the kit, not the companion set. We'll be using those later for the last couple of cards. And actually, I think I'm gonna stamp it here because I did come up with an idea for adding even a little bit more to the inside. So this we're done with. But while we have it open, I'll show you. I have a scrap that I cut off from the envelope and I thought it would look nice right in there. So we're gonna add that. So then that's another option for decorating the inside. And so here's one option and here was the option I did f at first. So the inside is done, oops, and I forgot also, actually I'm gonna bring my envelope in in that bubble bath one more time because we're gonna stamp that flower also on the envelope. And now our stamping is done. For the next part, I'm bringing in a scrap of vellum and I have my dark granny apple green marker because there are vellum pieces in the kit, which you'll see a little bit later. And that gave me the idea for this. So I have a scrap. This is about, I think, just under four inches. Well, let's see, just under four inches wide, three and three quarter inches. And I need about three inches. So I'm just taking my blend and I need two of them for the two cards. And they're each an inch and a quarter wide. So I'm going to mark. I love this. So I need at least two and a half inches. I have to go at least to here. And then I'm just gonna run that ink right across. And yes, I'm getting it on my glass mat, but I'm gonna use my chamois to clean that. And I'm just laying on some color. You're not gonna really see much of it because it's gonna be covered by the other tag up here. So I'm not too worried. And then I'm gonna grab my chamois. I'm gonna move this to the side and clean it up. Love this because it, I've wrung it out so it's not very wet. It's just a little bit damp. And give this just a second to dry. It looks like it's just a little bit wet up here where I put a little bit of extra ink. And then I'm gonna cut it at two and a half inches because that's what I need for both cards. And we'll save this for another set of cards and then I want to cut it at three inches and I have a little bit of white space on each side but I've got room to trim off what I don't need so we'll do this at about three inches and again it doesn't have to be exact and then cut it in half so at an inch and a quarter And then I have the two labels for both of the cards. I will leave one here and put one aside and we'll finish our assembly. So I'll bring this a little closer. First thing I'm gonna do is put some adhesive, some seal on the back. And we're gonna lay it right over here and center it. Then I'm going to bring in some ribbon, and this comes from the Sheer Ribbon Combo Pack. This is Bubble Bath, but we'll be using the Azure Afternoon on a later card. 
and I'm just going to measure it out so it overlaps a little bit like that. That looks pretty good. And grab my snips and cut it at an angle. And then I'm going to bring in my glue dots. There are some that come with the kit. Oops. And I'm going to grab one so that we can put the two sides together, the two halves. And then I'm going to put a couple on the front to hold it to the tag. Like this. And I want it pretty straight up and down so that it makes a nice contrast there. And then I use my dimensionals, which also come with the kit. And I start in the center by overlapping them just a little bit with the ribbon to help hold it down. And then I just made a line across the center. I think that's probably good. Take the backings off and then center it here. And so that is card number one, except for the bling. And I'm using the bling that comes with the kit. But we will be using some other embellishments as well on one of the other cards. So I'm just going to grab my take your pick tool and scatter them around the tag. There are two sizes, a larger one and a smaller one. over I think. Use my fingers. And that is card number one. Here is the second card I designed and it comes from part of the card base. This is what the card base looks like when it's still attached. So again, a front and a back, and I'm using both. So we're gonna use this one for the first card. And this time I'm going to start with a basic white card base. And the card front is, or the first layer, this layer is card front size. So four and a quarter by five and a half. I simply just slice that card base right in half. And we're gonna put that on with some multi-purpose liquid glue. It looks like it's a little bit long, the card base. You can see some white peeking through. So actually at the end, I'm going to just snip that off. In fact, maybe I'll do it now because then it won't interfere with placement of everything. I made it so everything is flush on that side and we're ready to get rolling. We'll put that aside for now. And we're going to again use a scrap of vellum. So again, scrap of vellum, and this time I'm going to use, I actually use the dark azure afternoon blend, but I'm going to try the light one this time, and we're going to do the same thing as before. It's, I need two and a half inches again, because each one is an inch and a quarter. So I know I need it to right about here. And we're just going to spread some color. And let that dry for a few seconds. And again, cleaning off my surface with my chamois. Just takes a few seconds to dry. I'd say that's pretty good. And then just like with the last card, we are going to cut it at two and a half inches. Save this for another set of cards and then cut this down to three inches, taking a little bit off of each side. And then cutting it in half, so at one and a quarter inches. And saving the other one for another card. Now we're going to do some stamping and we're going to use a component from the kit. There are four of these in the kit, so we will be using three of them on each of the three card bases. And I'm going to stamp You've Been On My Mind, which comes from the kit. 
And I'm going to bring in Balmy Blue. And the best way to put your stamp on when it's long like this and can bend is lay it out. Just sort of drop it on your surface so then presumably it will be straight and pick it up with your block. Sometimes they want to curve at the edges. And we're going to center it on the label. While we have the balmy blue, we're also going to stamp on the inside. And for this, I actually have a stamp from a brand new stamp set called Spotlight in Nature that you will see in the new catalog. I was able to go to on stage, which is our conference, our yearly conference. And I got this stamp set while I was there. And I thought that was perfect for the inside. And I will show you everything once I finish the card. Then we just need one more ink. Back to bubble bath. And I took the same flower and also stamped it in bubble bath again. You can put it on either side. All right, so next we're going to bring in a garden green and a scrap of garden green as well. And this time I'm using stamps from the Garden Meadow stamp set. Again, it's an online exclusive that coordinates with this kit. So we're going to stamp the watering can and the little garden tool. And then there are dies that cut those out. And so I'm going to cut those out and cut out the fence and be right back. And here they are. I probably should have put an adhesive sheet on the back of this, but I did not. I'm going to use my glue dots. And I did put an adhesive sheet on the back of the pecan pie before I ran the fence through. So let's start assembling. And so we're going to put the fence about here by the path. And then for this, I'm just going to use my glue dots, like I said. on the spout just so that it stays put. And I've got one at each end of the garden tool. We'll put that on this side. And for this, I think I must have used my seal. It's not lying as flat, but I think that's, oh, I think I used my glue. So I do think I'm going to put a little, little dab of glue underneath just to hold that in place. See if we can come on, there we go. Because we're gonna put our little dragonfly on there, so I do want it to be lying flat. And then we will attach these together. Oh, I did a longer one that time. We're gonna go with it like this though, I think. Didn't even realize that. So if you want it the whole length, of the banner, it has to be, I think, four inches. Nope, three and three quarter inches. Ah, that's right. I So I didn't need to cut it down. That scrap that I had was exactly the width that I needed it. But that is all right. We're going to do this one this way and just center it on here. So you have your choice. That's pretty good. And then we'll put the adhesive right on the back of the tag so that it doesn't show like this. And I am still going to put this part toward the edge. Like this, I have it a little higher this time to show a little bit more of that brighter green. And then for the embellishments, they again come from that Garden Meadow suite, and they are called Adhesive Back Dragonflies and Birds. So I'm going to bring in my Take Your Pick tool to put those on. Put a dragonfly right there, sitting on that watering can. And then one of each of the birds. Slide that off. Come on. There we go. this toward the top and then the other one toward the bottom here on the side 
and that is card number two. So let me show you what I used to make it. Besides obviously what comes in the kit, um, the vellum, like I said, was just scraps, but the Garden Meadow stamp set is this. So it's got more than one tool, cute little wagon and basket of flowers and things that you can um, stamp right on your paper or stamp and then fussy cut and add some good sentiments. I think we're gonna be using that actually for one of the other cards. And then you could do the fence like this or the way I did it, which was cut it out from the dies. These are the dies. We are gonna be using that wonderful arch later on. And so this is the die that cuts out that image. And this is the die that I used today that cuts out this image. And then we've got some grass and hill kind of dies as well. And then many that cut out the images from the stamp set. And so that is card number two, except that I forgot to stamp the envelope. And so I did the same thing with the envelope that I did for the first card. Since we have a little pink flower on the uh, inside, I stamped that also on the front of the envelope. This is the third card that I made. And again, using that wonderful arch die from the set that I just showed you. And I'm actually gonna change this up just a little bit, but we are using the backside of that card base that we used for the last card. So we'll put that here for just a minute. We are starting with a basic white card base. And we're gonna put this right on the top with multi-purpose liquid glue. Again, we just cut that card base in half. We did not cut this down at all. And then I used Gorgeous Grape to cut the arch. So I had a piece of cardstock that was, again, the same size as the card front, four and a quarter by five and a half, and I cut out the arch. But for this card, I decided to add a little more to it. So after I cut the die out, I ran it through an embossing folder called the Exposed Brick 3D Embossing Folder. And that's how I got this look. And I think that's going to really add a lot to the card. I used it on some of the later cards. So when I went back to prep this, I decided to use it on this one as well. So this I am also going to put on with my multi-purpose liquid glue both because it's the size of the card front and because it's got some narrow edges and because it's got the embossing. So the glue will help hold that in place a little bit better. Isn't that beautiful? So it looks like you're looking out from an archway. Gorgeous. And then we're using a tag that also comes with the kit. There are four of these. And so we're using three of them for the card bases. You'll have one extra. And I, I don't know if you can see, but I added a little bit of, I think it was bubble bath, or it might've even been something darker. I, let's see. No, I think it was bubble bath. So I used my blending brush to add a little bit of color after the fact, and we're going to do that now so that we get better coverage because I it was already on the card and so I didn't want to go too crazy. We're going to do it at the beginning and add a little more color. I've got my pink blending brush. I have one dedicated to each color, pink, red, blue, etc. And my bubble bath. And we're going to add some color. And again, I can start off here. I think I may, so I want it darker. I want it to show a little bit more. Maybe we'll start with dark in the middle and sort of work our way out to the edges, sort of an ombre effect. But yeah, I definitely want more color this time. It seemed so stark white that it didn't go, and that was why I decided I wanted to add some color, a little bit more. And then I'm going to just wipe off my surface. Let me see, did we use pink on the inside? We did not. So we're good with that. I'm gonna wipe this off again. I love that you can work right on this glass mat. And with the chamois being just damp, it dries very quickly too, because of course you don't want water or wetness to get on your inks. But that's almost dry already. Excellent. So I'm gonna put this over here. We're going to stamp this time in Azure Afternoon. 
And the Have a Beautiful Birthday comes from the stamp set included with the kit. Oh yeah, I like that much better. Very happy with that. And then for the inside, we are gonna grab that same Dear Friend stamp from Spotlight in Nature that I used on the last card. And again, one more time with the flower, but this time we're gonna do it in Gorgeous Grape. And we're gonna do the same thing on the envelope. And that takes care of our stamping. And now for assembly, I'm gonna bring in this, a different ribbon from the Sheer Ribbon Combo Pack, and this time Azure Afternoon. And I'm doing the same thing, just kind of eyeballing. I want it to peek out a little bit from the top and the bottom. And cut it in the angle, but I don't like that angle. We're going to fix that. <laughs> and just like last time, grab the glue dots. And put a couple in the front. And then add some dimensionals. And again, we're going to start with the ribbon. I really like to make sure that it's held in place. And place it up here. And I like the idea of having an arch this way and kind of an arch this way. I think it makes a nice little contrast. And then we're going to bring in those adhesive back dragonflies and birds again from the Garden Meadow Suite. And I'm going to take the pick tool and we'll do something similar to the last time, a dragonfly in the field on one of the flowers. And then a bird. I think I need a little more putty. Try that again. Bird up in the sky. Maybe here. And then the other bird on the tag. And there we have it card number three. Let me quickly show you what I used for these cards. Again, I added the exposed brick 3D embossing folder, and I do think that it looks um, better than just the plain one. I like that a lot. And then, of course, on the inside, the Dear Friend, as I said, comes from a brand new stamp set called Spotlight in Nature. Isn't that beautiful? I love the images. I love the font. I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. So, as sad as it is to see things retiring, it's exciting to get the new products. And for the next card, I really wanted to use some of the wooden elements, or at least one of them, from that come with the kit. And they come uncolored, and I felt like it was too stark. And I looked online and I saw that at least one other person had used blending brushes to add ink to them. And I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to try. So that's what I did for this one. So I'm starting again with a basic white card base. And this one I set up a little differently. I cut a piece of Highland Heather cardstock at card front size, four and a quarter by five and a half, and I ran it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're gonna put that right on with some multi-purpose liquid glue. And then we're, I've cut out from the other card base, the last card base, I cut out two sections, basically side by side. So it looks like this originally. And I cut both of those out and we're gonna use this one for this card. And again, if you wanted to, you could cut strips from the sides to put on the inside, which I didn't do, but you certainly could, maybe even over on the left. Maybe even here. Let me try that and we'll see what it looks like. But, um, and the reason that I did this is 
You could, if you really don't like that look, you could cut out your opening and cut this out and then just lay it right inside the opening. But the reason I did it this way is I have a restaurant that my husband and I really love to go to called Paisano's and it has murals like this on the walls and the walls kind of look like this. They're more, you know, sort of exposed brick or there's some that has more just plaster but with kind of pieces coming off, you know, purposefully and then these beautiful murals. So that's what it reminded me of. So I decided to do this card this way. But like I said, if you don't like it, you could cut out your, your area where this is gonna go and then just lay it right inside. We're gonna put that on again with the multi-purpose liquid glue just because the surface is so textured. We wanna make sure that glue is gonna get all in the little nooks and crannies and, and adhere well. And I put it up toward the top because I wanted to make room for the tree. Oh, and I should have done my stamping first. We're gonna stamp, have a beautiful birthday in balmy blue. So hopefully this will work because it is textured, fingers crossed, but really it's better to stamp it first and then put it on. All right, it worked. And then for the inside, I stamped Let's Celebrate, so we still need that balmy blue, and that comes from the Sentimental Park stamp set. And then one more time with the flower, just because I really love it. And we're gonna do it in Highland Heather. That takes care of the inside, but we're gonna do one on the envelope as well. And that takes care of our stamping. And now we're gonna bring in garden green and I've got my green blend and we'll bring in that tree. And I just laid the color right directly on here because I wasn't sure how dark it would be and I wanted it to be dark. I get all the way to the edges and then I'm going to bring in pecan pie and my blending brush that I use for browns and just add some color at the bottom quick and easy and it does take a little bit to dry but I think it will be okay so I may do my embellishments first after we clean up the surface, just so that we can give this a little bit of time to dry. So I'm gonna bring this back over here and I used, again, some of the embellishments that come with the kit. And I'm gonna take your pick tool. And this time I put a few more on here. Whoops. Get it, yes. <laughs> They're clear, so it's hard to see. And I put, I took a little one and used it on the dot for the eye. And beautiful. And then this time I used one of the birds. And then all we have left is to put the tree on. And for that, I just use my glue dots. Yeah, that should be pretty dry. It may still, um, you know, leave a little ink. So do take a little bit of care with that. But I put glue dots, several of them in areas where the it was thicker. So they, I would be sure they wouldn't show. But I only used a few. So I have three on the back. Whoops. I didn't pick up that third one, it looks like. Try that again. And then I did have one down at the bottom. And there are small glue dots that come sometimes with the kit. 
So I'm gonna grab one of those for that. The ones that come with this month's kit are larger, but these are from a past kit. And I apologize because I don't know which one because I take them out and use them when I can. So I just took the paper off and I'm gonna lay it right there on the bottom. And so then that should be enough to hold that tree in place because the glue dots are nice and strong. And I purposely put it by the tree. That was my thinking by the tree or the bushes that are there. And there we have the next card. All right, and let me show you that wonderful embossing folder that I used. It's called Exposed Brick 3D Embossing Folder. I really like this, have used this a lot in many of my cards. And then the Let's Celebrate comes from the Sentimental Park stamp set. But that is what I used for these cards. Here's what I did for card number five. So very similar to the other one, but the layout is different. So, and I use different embossing folder. I'll talk about that too. So I did start with a basic white card base. And I took a piece of garden green cardstock and I ran it through the wonderful painted texture 3D embossing folder. Same size as the card front, four and a quarter by five and a half. And again, we're gonna put it on with multi-purpose liquid glue. And it's funny because this one, I think you could use either way. <laughs> It doesn't really have an embossed and a debossed side. There's a little bit of both on both sides. And then I have the other image that I cut from the card base. I'm gonna put that also on with my glue. And this time I'm putting it down at the bottom so that I have room for the sentiment at the top. Give it a good burnish so that that glue catches. I have a scrap of Highland Heather. And this time the sentiment, I can't, can't imagine having a better friend comes from that garden meadow stamp set. And we're going to bring in Highland Heather ink. This scrap that I have is an inch wide because we're going to use it in a punch. Oh, actually, we're going to do that first. We're going to take the punch, which is called the Banners Pick a Punch, and we're going to first punch one end. And you always want to check to make sure that it is centered on the back. And we're going to save that little piece that gets punched out so that we can line up our edges, which you'll see. Put a little more ink on there. And I'm going to not put it on the end because I want room. I want it to go across the length of the card. And now we're going to take this. So I know I want about a finger space here. So we're going to put this here. And I'm going to make a little mark with my pencil on the outside edge because that's where I need to cut it. I don't need that anymore. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Just know that if it isn't, when you line it up in the punch, it's gonna be crooked. And we're gonna put that back in, push it to the back, line it up again. And we have even spacing on both sides. So that's a little tip for today. Now we're gonna take, let's see, what did we do? Highland Heather, I think, on the inside. Yes, have a beautiful birthday in Highland Heather. So we'll bring that stamp back in. And then we're done with Highland Heather. And now for this card, I used a stamp from the Garden Meadow set, but I really wasn't that crazy about it. So I'm actually going to use that same flower. I just love it. I think we'll do it, though, maybe in Balmy Blue this time. And the nice part is whoever you're giving the card to doesn't know that you've used it on multiple cards because they haven't seen them. But I just think that flower is so pretty. And then I'm going to do the same thing, of course, on the envelope.
and that takes care of our stamping. So to finish assembly, I am going to use my glue again because this embossing folder is so thick. Normally I would use my seal, but again, I want to make sure it adheres. So I'm using my glue. I'm going to center that at the top. And this is actually a die that comes with the companion die set that goes with January, February, and March's paper pumpkin kits. And I'll show you those in a minute. And you could put an adhesive sheet on the back, but since I didn't do that, I'm just going to use my glue dots. And I'm using them on the largest three leaves to hold everything in place. So again, largest three leaves. And we're going to put that like this. And then last but not least, another bird embellishment from the adhesive back dragonflies and birds. I think we'll use this one this time just to change it up a little. And I believe that is card number five. So uh, let me show you quickly too what I used in addition. Like I said, we have those wonderful dies. They are called the Love of Spring dies. And so I used this one, like I said, and each of these coordinates with one of the kits, January, February, or March. This was January, this coordinated with February, and then a wonderful label die that I've used quite a bit. And we will be using that on the next card. I also used the Painted Textures embossing folder. I love this and sadly it's retiring I believe so I'm sad about that because I use it a lot. I love it. And then did I use yeah that everything came from the kit from the inside so I think that was it just the oh and then I can't imagine having a better friend than you. That comes from the Garden Meadow stamp set. All right so I have two last cards. This is the first one and for this, I'm using the extra stamp set that comes with the kit that has multi, kind of multi-layered or two or three step stamping of flower and leaf image. So that's what we will be using for this. And again, I used an envelope because I was figuring out how many I had left. And I was able to use, I used six for those first two cards I showed you. So three left so we can make three cards, but actually I'll show you how we can make more cards from this kit because that is the idea to get as many cards as possible. So let me show you up close. This is another envelope that I cut apart. So it looks the same as this, but there's also a set of designer series paper in the Garden Meadow suite. And this is one of the papers from that. As you can see, there's a beautiful image on the back. So I will show you that at the end, but we're gonna use this one this time because this is a way to then extend and make more cards even when you run out of product from the kit. So even when you run out of envelopes, you can still make more cards because the stamps, you can make obviously as many as you would like. And for this, we did also use a piece of vellum from the kit and we're gonna do that again. But again, once you run out, the vellum, I'm going to bring in a piece to show you, is actually very thick. It's very, very thick vellum. It, it feels almost like cardstock. So what you can do, obviously, is just cut a piece of gorgeous grape cardstock and put it underneath, and no one will be the wiser. So we'll leave that out because we're going to need it. And I'm going to bring in, yet again, a basic white card base. That is my favorite one to use. And actually for this one, you could use very vanilla because technically the color in there is very vanilla, but <laughs> basic white is just my go-to. So I didn't even think of that. I probably should have used very vanilla on these. So FYI, if you would rather do that, go right ahead. Oh, it's so hard to cover up pretty paper, isn't it? Two-sided, beautiful designs. Wait till you see. I, again, I will show them to you at the end when I finish this card, but the papers are gorgeous. So we're going to lay that out. And again, they're meant to coordinate, so the colors are similar. Although I'm going to show you for the last card um, a slightly different color palette. So you will see. And actually, I forgot we should have stamped on this first, but that's all right. I'll just open it up. 
and that will solve the problem. So we're going to use, again, that wonderful flower from the second stamp set that comes with the kit. All right, so we're starting, of course, with the largest stamp, and I'm bringing in my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And we're gonna make sure we have some good ink. I did just re-ink it, so it should be good. And we're gonna stamp most of it in the corner, like that. Make sure we get a good image. And then I'm going to wipe this off. And then instead of having to color it in, of course, we have our stamps that are going to do the coloring for us. So I'm going to bring in the flower filler stamp, the larger one, and we're going to use Highland Cutter for that. And I will say, I do like this look. So if you wanted to, you could just leave it like this and finish your card. And I think that looks really pretty too. But um, I want to show you how to do the filler, the three-step stamp. So I'm going to do that rather than leave it plain. Again, we're gonna get some good ink on that stamp. And then line it up. And I lined it up with the leaves as best I could. And the closer you get, the easier it is to see. But once you feel like you've set it down, you're committed. <laughs> There's no changing it once that ink has hit the, um, the paper. All right, and I'm going to switch to the leaves to give that just a little bit of time to dry to make sure before we put another color on there. And so I'm bringing in Granny Apple Green. And I guess if you wanted to, if you wanted to keep the color palette, you could use blues. You could use maybe balmy blue with Azure Afternoon. I'm going to try that, actually. We're going to see what that looks like. I'm going to bring in balmy blue, just rather than introducing a, another color. If you want it more similar, then we'll try that. Not exactly a traditional leaf color, I know, but let's see what it looks like. And then again, we're going to line up with the edges love my photopolymer stamps and then we're going to go back to that flower and we're bringing in berry burst for the accent because there's a little bit of berry burst even in there too which is why i chose it and so we have another filler stamp and i believe it goes this way and this time i lined it up with the centers of the flower that because I found that was the easiest way to line it up. Oh, that's right. And I used Balmy Blue for the filler center. So we'll bring that back in. And there are actually two different stamps. Although, honestly, I think you could use them interchangeably. <laughs> so we'll put one here. Actually, I'm going to use the same one then. But there are two that come with the kit. And then we just need our definition on the leaves. So I'm going to use Azure Afternoon for that. And so it just gives a little bit of definition where those black lines are in the middle. We're going to line those up. And there you have it. Pretty, pretty darn close to keeping within the lines, especially for the leaves, but I'm happy with that. And then for the ins, well, let's do our sentiments. So we'll bring in Gorgeous Grape for that. I'll be doing the inside anyway, but and I've got one of those labels that I cut in Balmy Blue from that die that comes with the companion die set, the Love of Spring dies. And they have a beautiful birthday, of course, comes from the kit. And then for the inside, I use Dear Friend again from Spotlight on Nature. And again, the flower, because why not? So I'm going to do the Dear Friend and Gorgeous Grape. And then I'm going to do the flower in Balmy Blue. Can you tell this is my favorite stamp in the kit? Because it is. 
And then the same thing on the envelope. And our stamping is done. I'm going to grab my bone folder once more, flatten that back out. And then I'm going to bring in my seal to adhere these together. And I'm bringing in some more of that ribbon, the bubble bath from the sheer ribbon combo pack. This time we're going to line it up this way. And snip it. Got my glue dots. And we'll angle it this way this time. Same as before, dimensionals on the back. Again, starting at the ribbon and overlapping them. And then I just made a line of them so that the whole tag will stand up. I'll take the paper off and then place it here. So this time for embellishments, I'm using the Purple Fine Shimmer Gems. And the colors are Berry Burst, Gorgeous Grape, and Highland Heather, so they coordinate perfectly. And I have to say, I do like it better with the blue leaves rather than the green. But again, personal preference. Do what you like. So I'm going to grab a Berry Burst. And we'll place it here. And then... I guess gorgeous grape, maybe. Over here. And Highland Heather up on the tag. And that is it for card number six. And again, just to show you quickly what I used, in case you did not see the previous cards, in case you didn't watch it, for the dear friend, I used Spotlight in Nature. I love this set. Like I said earlier, beautiful images, and I love the font. So this is going to be new in the new annual catalog that's coming out. It also has some wonderful dies that go with it that are circles that are very detailed. And so you can make fancy things. Let me see if I can grab it. So these are the wonderful dies that are companions. So again, they've got different details on them. They're all, they all have some kind of detail. And look at all that you get. I just love these and I haven't used them yet but I can't wait to and then let me show you that gorgeous designer series paper and the dies let me show you the dies in case you didn't see them earlier so these are the uh, love of spring dies and they coordinated with January February and now March's kit and this was the label die that I used for this card and the designer series paper is six by six and it's called meandering meadows these are the beautiful images on the front sides you get 12 different ones and then 12 uh coordinating images on the back let me see if i can flip i got almost all of them these are the coordinating images so this was what we used today for this card and then we're going to use i think it's this one for the next card but i will show you that in a sec stay tuned here is the final card, and again, I'm using paper from the Meandering Meadows 6x6 paper pack that goes with the Garden Meadow Suite and is an online exclusive. And so you can see the color palette is different, and I am going to change this up just a tiny bit from what I did. But I wanted to use, again, the wooden elements that come with the kit. So this uses, there are six three that look like this and then three that are similar so that is the one we're using but i think you could use either one so we're again going to start with a basic white card base and the designer series paper here's what it looks on the like on the front side and i've used this side because it has similar colors but it also introduces pumpkin pie so i am going to change this shading on this to pumpkin pie because i think that will coordinate a little better but this is cut at four and a quarter by five and a half, same size as the card front. 
And we're going to put on that multi-purpose liquid glue. And this is killing me to cover up that gorgeous paper. <laughs> that is the problem with two-sided paper. We're using another element that comes with the kit. There are three of these, I believe, three rectangles. And again, they're vellum. They're very thick. And you could easily substitute then just a piece of gorgeous grape in the same size, gorgeous grape cardstock. And so, and then I've got the element from the kit. And this time I decided to leave it plain because I felt like it was okay with the background. So the way I adhered these, I put some glue dots on the back again of the three largest leaves and making sure not to put them at the edges, but more toward the center because the uh they overlap it overlaps just a tiny bit from that vellum i wanted to make sure it adheres and then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to put vellum i mean i'm going to put a glue dot on the back of the vellum in the same places so that they don't show so they're on the back of those three leaves and those get placed on the card centered top and bottom and moved over to the left and now we'll do some stamping and again before we do that actually I'll bring out my die cuts that I've already cut using a die from those love of spring dies in melon mambo blueberry bushel and gorgeous grape because again those are colors there's some melon mambo blueberry bushel so we're just bringing that out in the gorgeous grape so we'll put those aside I have a tag from the kit and you get four of these but once they run out, you could use the something fancy dies to make dies that are a similar size, and that would work. It just wouldn't have the gold around the edge. And we are going to, I'm going to grab my pumpkin pie ink and my orange blending brush. And I am going to start here just to make sure it's not too, too dark, but I think that's going to work better. Yeah, I think that's going to look better, but we'll find out because again, I just felt like the white was too stark. So we've got some color laid down and we're going to wipe this off with the chamois and then we're going to stamp our sentiment. I can't imagine having a better friend that comes from the garden meadow stamp set and we'll bring in gorgeous grape. And then while we have it, we'll stamp the inside. And for that, we're going to do um, have a beautiful birthday. That comes the stamp that comes from the kit. And now for this one, I embellished the inside. There was a little strip that was extra. As our stamping is done. So there's a half inch strip and it is five and a half inches in length. So I'm just going to put that on also with my glue. So I decided I used the flower enough times <laughs> and it didn't really go with this one since we're using the leaves rather than the flowers. I'm going to put that on the bottom. And so our inside is done. And then for the envelope, I took another strip of leftover paper that runs length lengthwise, and it's also half an inch. Make sure it's right side up. And I'm going to put some glue on the edge of the envelope. So you want to make sure that the whole thing is adhered so it doesn't mess up the machine when it gets pushed through there. And we'll put that right up against the edge as well. And 
And then I'm just gonna snip the excess away. And so that's our envelope this time. And so all we have to do is finish assembly and add some embellishments. So I'm using my seal to put the label on. Now I do like the way that brings in the background color of the pumpkin pie a little bit. Let's see how it looks with these. And I'm gonna put glue dots on the backs of all of these, again, on the three largest leaves so that they will be held down. You could also, I didn't do it, but it, it would be even easier to run this through your machine, but after putting a, an adhesive sheet on the back, and then you could just peel and stick. But since I didn't do that, I'm gonna put those glue dots on the back and be right back. And now we'll lay them out. And I think this time I'm gonna change it up just a little bit, the order of them. I think we're gonna put the blueberry bushel first and leave the gorgeous grape on top just because it's more, more prominent. Oh, we got a little glue dot sticking out there. Tuck that in. And so I just kept the stems together but moved the leaves over a little bit each time. Like that. What do you think? I think I do like it better with the pumpkin pie background. Again, personal preference. And then we're just gonna add our bling from the kit. And I figure I'll use it till I run out, use them till I run out. And then when I do run out, I'll just use iridescent rhinestones or pearls or something, something from my stash. And again, just scattering a few around, large and small. to draw your eye around the card. And then that is the last card. So again, very different. And let me show you what I used extra. I used the stamp for the inside, or for the outside sentiment from the Garden Meadow stamp set that we've used on some of the other cards. We've used some of those images on the other cards. I love this. This is an online exclusive and it does have companion dies. I use the Love of Spring dies for the leaves. And they are the coordinating set for January, February, and March's paper pumpkin kits. And then if you, when you run out of these labels, like I said, there are four that come with the kit. You can use the something fancy dies. The smaller one of these is about the same size. Pull it out. And so that would make a nice substitute. And then you could make six cards because you have six of the leaves that come with the kit two different sizes or two different they're pretty similar let me bring in the other one to show you this is the other leaf embellishment that comes with the kit so easily you could make them six cards and then last but not least is that gorgeous designer series paper called meandering meadows <clears throat> these are all of the papers that come in that pack so gorgeous and you can see how easily they coordinate with this kit and then when we flip them over these are the back sides and so this is the one that we use today but there are lots of other options even some with more flowers on them this is the one we used on the previous card oh no no no, no. that's right because that was the back side we used uh, this one on the previous card. All right. Gorgeous papers. And so that is it. That is all of the cards for today. So let me leave them here. I'll bring them back in. And again, we changed things up on these last two with leaves that coordinate in color with this. And this pumpkin pie instead of, I believe I used Berry Burst on that. And then the other cards. This one, they don't even fit on here. There are so many this time, <laughs> which I originally I left plain, but I think I'll just leave that one there for you to see. And this one, and then of course the first two. So there they all are. They don't even fit. There are so many, whoops, and this one's upside down. 
But those are all the different cards that we made today. I hope you like it. I appreciate you watching every month and leaving me some love in the comments, letting me know if you like the cards, let me know which one is your favorite. If you make any of these cards, I would love to have you share them in the comments as well. I would love to see your version. So thanks for watching. Again, stick around. I have many other videos on my channel, cards, scrapbook pages, home decor items, tips and techniques, beginner videos. So there's a lot there. Hopefully you will find something you like and I will see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Happy stamping.